Welcome to Driveway Garage. Today I'm working on a 2003 Chevy Impala. It needs a stabilizer bar. I sold the car as is. I told the guy what was wrong with it. He wanted to know what I'd charge him to fix it because they're not from here. Uh, I live in Washington State and they're migrant workers up here to pick apples. So I gave him a price and they said okay. So I had already already ordered the part off of Amazon because I was going to fix it before I sold it. There's the stabilizer bar. There's the hardware package that comes in it. Now the old one is hollow, which I'll show you here in a second. This is a fix from, I think it's a dormant fix, but it's a solid bar. So it should last a heck of a lot longer than this hollow tube did. Although I guess it lasted 18 years unless it's been replaced but see right there yeah see where it snapped off I guess it's a pretty common problem on these but in this case the guy hit a curb really hard and bent his rim and ruined the rim and tire and that's probably what snapped it sheared it right off so I watched a few videos South Main Auto did one but he took it out from behind but he has a lift so he could lift it up and lower the subframe a little bit, drop it out that way. I don't have that option. And I watched another video, they just did it from the side. So, after you get it jacked up, secured properly so it doesn't fall on you, take the wheel off. Those are, yeah, where's my gun at? The other side, I think they're 19 millimeters on the lug nuts. And you gotta take this long bolt out right there. And it's really rusty, and I just don't have strong enough tools to do it. Uh, I, well, anyway, what I'm going to try to do, I just bought this oscillating tool for another project. So I'm just going to take the metal blade, and I'm going to attempt to just cut that bolt off. South Main Auto, uh, they use a torch and just torch it off. He says he never tries to save them. And I don't blame him. I'm going to try to get in between the rubber gaskets, see if that works, and uh, cut that thing off. And then there's two bolts right there you have to take out on both sides. And you got the same configuration here on both sides. So you get that off, the one on the other side, take those four bolts off, and then supposedly you can just fish the new part right through the frame. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do, so I'll keep you posted. Well, I got the first one off. Oh, halfway off. I cut it about halfway through, and then I put my impact on it on the bottom, half inch wrench on the top. It's half inch top and bottom. And uh, when I put the impact to it, it just snapped in half, as you can see. So, if you have an impact and a good half inch, you can probably just break them. Cause I don't think they're going to come off with all that rust. It's pretty rusty on top. Maybe if a guy took the time, soaked it down with WD-40 a few times. But. So I'm just going to pound that one out of there. And then I'll take these two bolts out while I'm over here. Then I'll go to the other side. I ended up getting the rest of it out of there. I took my cutting tool, cut through this rubber and plastic because it was kind of bound up on the screw and the bolt. And I hammered my screwdriver in there and pried it off of there. So now it's out of there. Now I'm going to go to the other side and take that one off and see if I can rotate this bar down out of the way so I can get to those bolts better. But since the other one's not broken, that probably won't happen. But we'll see. I thought before I moved to the other side, I'd give it a shot. Seems like it's a 15 millimeter. And it's actually pretty loose. I already got them turned just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and take them out. And I think I have a ratcheting 15. I'm gonna go check and see. That'll make it a little faster. Well, it's, it's going, but it's going slow. I have to have it angled like this going down and you can only go not even an eighth of a turn at a time. There's not enough room, there's like brake lines or something in here, so I can't get my cordless in there. I have one that goes on a 90, but there's not enough room. 
So this is what you gotta do, little by little. Take those two bolts out. I still may go to the other side, see if I can rotate that stabilizer bar down so I have a little more room on the, on the front one. We'll see. Well, it's not a perfect fit, but I found a ratcheting five, five eighths and there's not much tension on them, so this is working. A lot faster than the other method with eighth of a stroke at a time, that was taking forever. So I got one out. Let's see if I can get the other one out now. If it's too hard, I'll go down. I'll go to the other side, rotate this bar down. Hopefully, you give me some more room. Well, I got the other side off. It was really easy. Once I got those two bolts on the top about a quarter of the way out, I could take them out with my fingers, so that helped. Now I'll try this one again. Let's see. Any chance it's loose enough? Oh, yeah. It's loose enough now. I can get it out with my hand. I hate putting my arm and hand in places like this. I always worry that something's going to give way like a jack and a stand and cut my arm and all my fingers off something. That's the life of pretending you're a mechanic, huh? All right, I got both sides out. So now I just have to twist it and wiggle it and try to get it to come out. I'm going to try to take it out through the passenger side, but just because this side is a broken one, give me a little more clearance. But I don't know what's going to work for sure, but we're going to find out here in a minute. I won't be able to film it because I don't have a tripod, and I don't want it to be an hour-long video. This is the worst position for my lower back. It's a bad, I have some bulging disc, and on your knees, bent over, supporting your weight with your lower back just kills it, but... Life goes on. So, I don't know if I have to do anything as far as jacking up this control arm, whatever they call this, if I have to get that up out of the way, or if I can just wiggle it out of there. But I'm just gonna try to wiggle out, see what happens. Well, I got it out. I ended up jacking up this control arm, this whole thing, whatever they call it. I put a jack stand there and I couldn't wiggle it around the brake caliper, but it came out through there and underneath the dry shaft. Let's see if I can. So it went out here, back this camera out, right underneath the dry shaft and on the front side here, it came right out. So I'm gonna grab the new one while I'm here and see if I can't get that one to go in the same way real quick. Cause I just don't like the way this thing's sitting on here. Well, the new one is in there. It wasn't too bad. I slid it in from this side, but it wasn't, it was hard to get it to go above the frame right there on the other side. So once I got it most of the way in, I got on the other side, laid on the ground underneath and picked it up, twisted it, slid it over the frame. So it's pretty much in the same position on both sides now. So I think I'm gonna get the inside clamps on first and maybe get those bolts at least started and then I'll work on the outside part. I got the bolts started. I tightened the first front one down a little bit because uh, it was fit, it was closer so I got it down pretty good and then I took this pry bar and I pried down on the other side of the bracket to squish it down into place so I could get the thread started on the back one. Now I just have to Partially tighten them down. I'm not going to go all the way until I get everything hooked up so I have some wiggle room. I'm looking at this bolt and washers. It looks like you can put it on either way. The nut up or the nut down. So, now this one I like because the nut is built in. So I don't have to worry about hanging. Well, I still probably have to hang on to it. But, uh, let's see. The amount of room I have, I guess I'll put the bolt from the top down and then it sits on this top bracket here. So let's see what we can get done here. Okay, so I've got that in there. And when you're looking at it, if you put it with the bolt going down, this gap goes on the new part and then this gap at the bottom 
goes on the metal at the bottom. So you have some isolation. You don't want metal on metal. All right, vibrate like crazy. All right. So this side is temporarily uh, started. I'm going to go the other side, see if it's as easy as this side was. Well, on the, I finished on the driver's side and I couldn't get that clamp on good enough to get the bolts in. So I ended up using this vice clamp, squished it down as far as I could, and then I could get the bolts in. It was a little more struggle than the other side. But right now, if you look at this side, there's about an inch gap there around that arm. Let me go over to the other side. It's uh, too tight. So what I've got to do is up against the boot there, as you can see. I think you can see it. So what I've got to do is loosen up those top clamps and somehow pry or wiggle this thing back over the other way about half inch to an inch. I want the same gap on both sides. and I sure don't want it rubbing up against that boot. It'll just tear it up. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take these long bolts out so I can wiggle it. And I put a mark, use the yellow crayon, I put a mark about an inch away from where it's at right now so I can see how far I'm pushing in so I don't overcompensate. So let me get these bolts out of here and see if I can get that wiggled over. Well, I think a person would be better off putting the front washers and bolts in so you can see what kind of clearance you have. Now I have just a little bit of clearance there and I have a little bit more on the other side. So I'm gonna wiggle it just a little bit more. I ended up taking that top clamp off because I just couldn't get it to move. I sprayed some soapy water on the other one, loosened it quite a bit. But this one has more room. I don't have the brake lines in my way and stuff, so it'll be easier to reclamp it. Let me see if I can get just a skosh more out of it. Well, I just moved it. It's got some wiggle in it, so I think once the clamp's back on, I'll be all right. So let me get the clamp on, partially tightened, and hopefully I have enough clearance on both sides. Well, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. I got everything tight, and I have a little bit of slack there, but I gotta remember, once I put the wheel on and drop this off the jacks or the stands, it's gonna give me more clearance. I got those nice and snug in there. This is all put together, so I should fix it. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps somebody if they're trying to do this. It definitely would be nice to have two guys that go a lot faster. One guy could work on one side, one on the other, and have a little help getting the bar in and centered, but you can do it by yourself in a few hours. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.